Turkey's foreign minister warns his country's military is ready to fight Bashar al-Assad's regime if its forces enter a free province in an effort to defend the local YPG Kurdish militia. Meanwhile, Syrian government air and artillery strikes on eastern Ghouta have killed at least 35 people in rebel-held territory. Moscow officially reacts to U.S. Special Counsel Robert Mueller's indictment of 13 Russians for interfering in the 2016 presidential election, with a Kremlin spokesman saying the charges only refer to specific individuals and private companies and fail to prove any state involvement in political meddling. In Iraq, the Islamic State terror group claims credit for an ambush on a convoy near Kirkuk that killed at least 25 fighters of a government-linked militia. A security official says the attackers disguised themselves in police uniform. A noble energy and delic drilling, the companies that control Israel's two big offshore natural gas fields, sign a deal worth $15 billion to supply Egypt with 32 billion cubic meters of fuel. Welcome back. Well, let's refocus now more in depth on the latest development in Syria, the move into Afrin province by Assad government forces to help protect their former enemies. Local Kurdish militias who have now chosen to ally themselves with the Damascus, Damascus regime against an even bigger threat, the Turkish troops who have launched a cross-border offensive against them. This latest twist in the seven-year Syrian conflict highlights the shifting nature of that war both in its tangle of alliances and its transformation from a local civil war to a geopolitical struggle, drawing in other Mideast nations and even powers well beyond the region. Well, we're from a more, we're joined from Washington by Matthew Brodsky, a Middle East and geopolitical analyst for Wikistrat, and journalist Vladimir von Vilgenberg, who's near Kamishli, Syria. And Vladimir, let me ask you, what do we know about the latest developments on the ground there in Afrin province? Uh, until now, around 180 civilians have been killed in uh, Afrin by the Turkish attacks. Uh, heavy fighting is uh, continuing. Uh, and even today, uh, one civilian was uh, killed again. Uh, there are talks about a deal between, uh, a possible deal between the Syrian Kurds and the Syrian government. But until now, uh, the fighting continues. And all Syrian soldiers have entered Afrin. Vladimir, what are you hearing about that promise reported by Syrian state media today that Syrian government forces or linked forces would enter the province? Well, supposedly, uh, Syrian uh, government forces were supposed to be on the way to, to Afrin, but according to my latest information until now, it's not very clear if they have entered yet. Uh, Kurdish uh, journalists on the ground saying until now nothing has entered yet. The only people that have entered are uh, protesters from uh, Aleppo that were protesting against the Turkish attacks on Afrin. Uh, Matthew, we just saw our uh, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in Ankara basically trying to quell some of the fires that this Turkish offensive into Syria has uh, started to light up, and now we see it really threatening to perhaps blaze out of control. Should the U.S. be concerned about this? Well, yes, the United States should be concerned, but I think overall the United States is going to have to figure out precisely what it wants to do in the future of Syria, and they're going to have to make the switch to pushing back against Iran rather than trying to defeat ISIS, and this will actually have an impact on what the United States wants to do as far as allies and partnerships in the region. This is really important because right now, this pocket over, over here, Turkey, they're having to deal with an ally who doesn't act like an ally, but at the same time, their number one goal, Turkey, is to not have the Kurds dealing with them. So the Kurds will make a deal with Syria, and that might be just fine, according to Ankara. What does that do, Matthew, to it's prospects for... not in the U.S. For... interest, however. What does that do, Matthew, for prospects for any kind of political solution, which the U.S. for now is not really involved in, because the talks that we have seen are involving Iran, Turkey, and Russia, forces that seem to be now at odds on the ground even more. Right, exactly. That's the point. The United States really needs to start playing a leadership role, either taking over the uh, peace process and talks or creating its own uh, parallel one to the Russian effort, which, of course, is still separate from the Geneva process. So, I mean, that would be number one. Number two, I think it's interesting you can see how Russia is playing this. Uh, they still want to remain top dog for certain. They've made accusations against the uh, Turkish uh, regime that they've been using gas or something. That doesn't seem 
seem all that likely, but they would like to still get their licks in on Turkey, even as they still work with Turkey uh, to come with a solution. So it's dangerous ground for Erdogan to be playing in right now. But, you know, this is what Turkey does with foreign policy. Vladimir, how likely do you think is it that Syrian troops would actually engage directly with those Turkish forces in Afrin? Uh, until now, this is not clear because the Syrian forces have not arrived yet uh, in Afrin. But the Syrian government before, they have said that they will protect any territory of Syria because Syria is one part. Uh, it cannot be splitted. And they also don't accept uh, foreign occupation forces like Turkey, and they also call uh, the Americans occupation forces uh, in Syria and to occupy a part of Syria. So we have to see if they're really going to engage uh, with, uh, with the Turks. But it also depends on the Russian role, uh, because uh, Syria, in its fight against uh, Islamist rebels uh, and against terrorist groups, they rely on support of uh, Iran and Russia. So it's also very important what Iran and Russia will do. Will Russia also support a deal like this? Vladimir, you have been reporting in and around Syria for several years of that war. I'm interested in what strikes you now at this point in conflict with so many nations even more deeply involved from your perspective on the ground. Well, it's getting more complex, obviously, because also the war against ISIS, uh, it's not over yet. There's still ISIS in Deir ez-Zor. Uh, but what strikes me now is that uh, the Syrian conflict, it has become so international that there's like competition between Iran and Turkey, there's competition between America and the Russians, and also there's this thing that, for instance, Turkey doesn't want to have a Kurdish uh, rule zone on, on its border. So this makes it uh, very compli uh, complicated to follow, uh, but it's also very important for the media to keep covering this, uh, because the Syrian war is not over yet. And we expect, well, I expect that uh, the conflict uh, will continue despite that ISIS has been weakened, although not defeated yet. Matthew, the Kurds have turned now to the Syrians for help, I mean to the Assad regime. It was the U.S. that was supposed to be arming them and training them for the so-called border force. Is that also worrying, in a sense saying that perhaps the U.S. has lost the Kurds to some degree there, at least in that part of Syria? It certainly is. However, the U.S. wasn't really working as much with the Kurds in that pocket in Afrin as it was with those in the East right now. But still, as members of the YPG, which, of course, Ankara recognizes as a terrorist group and the U.S. does not, um, they still are, as a large political party, they tried to make a deal uh, with uh, oil fields, you know, the ones, the Kurds in Afrin. That resulted in the U.S. strike when they approached in near Dar al Zor last week. So it's a giant mess that the United States first needs to figure out exactly what it wants to do for the future, which I think would require it maintaining a presence in Syria. And that means being very strict with Turkey and telling them, we're going to work with the Kurds. That's what's going to happen. We're going to protect them, but they're not going to use their weapons against Turkey. And they need to ensure that that happens uh, and then take it from there. Because Syria right now, you can really see how the... Uh, their what they see as priorities of uh, the Assad regime now this has never been something he wanted to get involved in white right now he doesn't really want to be involved all that much with the front with Israel right now that's where Iran wants to get involved but between the access players Russia Iran Syria Assad that is they all have different priorities right now and you can see as they try to balance them. Vladimir, just briefly before we let you go from your perspective uh, from there you're reporting in Syria is the feeling that the United States is not involved, that the U.S. is ceding control to Russia and even the Assad regime? Well, I mean, the, the thing is more that uh, what the Kurds are saying is that America is not doing enough to stop Turkey because uh, Turkey is a NATO ally. Uh, also, the European countries are not doing much. Like, they feel that the, the, the position of U.S. is not strong enough to protect the Kurds of Afrin because the Kurds of Afrin didn't only fight uh, against rebels in that area. They also took part in fight against ISIS in other areas, like in Deir ez-Zor and Iraq and other areas. So the Kurds, they also see it as a task of, of the U.S. to also protect the Kurds in Afrin, especially now that Turkey is uh, killing Kur Kurdish civilians in Afrin with uh, NATO weapons of uh, Germany with tanks and also with some American weapons. So they want right. America to do more and just, just making statements. And that's why they're now sort of forced to also think of... Uh, make a sort of deal with the Syrian government because America is not doing much and Russia, they made a deal right. with Turkey uh, to sell Vladimir, out uh, Afrin for Idlib. Vladimir Van Vilgenberg in Syria and Matthew Brodsky in Washington. We're going to have to let you go there. Thank you both very much. An important conversation with a war still very much underway. We'll be right back on The Rundown.